Hey guys, not long ago I uploaded a video that was a stick foundation face-off thing where I took a bunch of stick foundations and compared them and kind of picked which ones were my favorites or what I thought about them. I picked ones that were really popular sellers as well as ones that I just happened to be curious about or ones that I, I guess, knew well. I'm gonna do the same thing with this video except we're gonna be talking about concealers. Now when I say concealers, I am talking about like wand style, like they look like a lip gloss concealer, like this thing right here, that have a doe foot thing or whatever, not cream concealers. So a lot of these aren't things that you would be using for spot concealing. These are mostly things that you're using for like under eye circles. There are a lot of them out right now because the trend is very much to highlight under the eye. Now I typically look for a concealer that's my skin tone. I don't want to highlight, I just want to hide a dark circle. Because of that, I'll honestly usually just use a full coverage foundation for my under eye circles. But I know that these are really popular. I had been requested to do concealers after I did the stick foundation video. So I thought, well, hell, why not? I'll give it a try. So I have a whole bunch of them here. I'm gonna tell you which ones that I have and then we're gonna talk about them all individually. I do have my notes over here. So if I do tend to look down, that's why I also have my second camera set up over here. So hi there, how you doing? And we'll be looking at close-ups in that lens. Now, when I chose these, I picked concealers that were, again, some of the more popular ones, some of the bigger sellers. I also threw in some that I personally really liked. And I also asked my patrons on Patreon to give me some suggestions or make some requests of ones that they would like included in this group. So a handful of these are recommendations from them or requests, I should say, from them, I should say at this point. If you'd like to support the channel through Patreon, you can do so. I'll include a link in the description of this video. It is just patreon.com slash Dustin Hunter. And of course, all of that money goes to creating content like this. So if you choose to, I appreciate it. I started trying to think about it like this. You wanna, you like what you see? You wanna buy me a cup of coffee once a month. I'm good with that. Difference is I'm not gonna spend it on coffee. And instead I'm gonna spend it on creating stuff like this or studio stuff, mics, lenses, lights, cameras, action, models, guest lists, just do your best, darling. Let's talk about what we have here. I have the Bare Minerals Bare Skin Complete Coverage Serum Concealer. I also have Clinique's Beyond Perfecting Foundation and Concealer. I have ColourPop's No Filter. I have e.l.f.'s 16-Hour Camo Concealer. I do have Estee Lauder's Double Wear Stay in Place Flawless Wear Concealer. I know that one fairly well. I have Fenty's Pro Filter. I have First Aid Beauties. This is the Hello Fab Bendy Avocado Put Me On Your Toast uh, Concealer. I have this one. This was a patron request. I also have Giorgio Armani's Power Fab. That is so hard for me to say. Power Fabric. Joan Collins Timeless Beauty because it is one of my favorite concealers and I want to talk to you about it in relation to the rest of the concealers that are here. I have the new one from Juvia's Place. I also have the Jeffree Star one. That was another request. I have the L'Oreal, the Makeup Revolution. I have the Maybelline Fit Me. I've got the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer. That's classic. Everybody knows. I've got the Tarte Shape Tape that everybody knows about. I've got the Too Faced Born This Way Super Coverage Multi-Use Sculpting Concealer. That one is fairly new. I also have the Urban Decay like Naked Weightless one. And I have the Wet n Wild Photo Focus. These are all the concealers that we're gonna be talking about. We should probably start talking about them. So in alphabetical order, because that's how I like to do things sometimes, because I'm a Virgo, I've got the Bare Minerals. This is the Bare Skin Complete Coverage Serum Concealer right here. This one was uh, one that was a patron request. The wand applicator for this is uh, one that you see in a lot of these. They, they either have a big bulbous one or they have a smaller like lip gloss looking one. It sort of looks like a little lip gloss one that's been squished. It's kind of It's kind of flat on the sides. This is one of the more watery formulas that I had tried. I think that this fits into a category of sort of highlighting concealers, more like the Joan Collins one that we'll talk about in a minute. If you're familiar with products like Touche Clot, this is much more coverage than Touche Clot, but it has that same sort of vibe of just like a brightening kind of effect. I quite liked this. This is something that personally I would chuck in a bag and I would take with me at the end of the day if I felt like I needed a little bit of brightening, I felt like I looked a little tired. This is the kind of product that I would reach for. Not probably the kind of thing that I would do all of my like concealing with if I really wanted to cover stuff. So the coverage is kind of light to medium. It blends well because it's fairly watery. It doesn't emphasize any sort of dry patches or fine lines. It does crease a little bit in that upper lid if you get it right up in there but that's common with almost all of these there's only a few that don't crease at least in my experience when testing them 
So I would say dry skin types, more mature skin types, if you want something that's kind of a brightening kind of concealer, that would be one that I would go for. The next one I'm gonna talk about is Clinique's Beyond Perfecting Foundation and Concealer. Now this is something that came out a few years ago and I know it was kind of popular when it launched. This has the big dumb applicator. I'm not a huge fan of these. I think that they're kind of silly because just because these applicators are the size that they are doesn't mean that they dole out a lot of product. So just because this is big and bulbous, it doesn't mean that you're getting a whole lot on your skin. And this is definitely one of those. Now, this is a very full coverage foundation. I would say, I'll go out on a limb and guess that this is probably one of the cheaper products by ounce because you get a ton for the money because it's also a foundation. This blend easily it does offer nearly full coverage in like a single layer it didn't dry really at all though and so you, you you really need to set it with powder this creased worse than any other product that i have in front of me uh because of that it made me kind of not really i'm like nah, i wouldn't use this like around the eyes just because it's a mess now if you wanted a full coverage foundation or you don't have any fine lines or anything like that it might be something that you gravitate toward eh, nah. Let's talk about ColourPop's No Filter Concealer. Now, I know, I didn't want to buy this because I'm not a big fan of ColourPop, but this is a very big seller at Ulta, so I went there and I bought it. I wanna say a couple things about this, and we're gonna talk about its counterpart at the very end here, because this reminded me a lot of the Wet n Wild concealer in a lot of ways, with a couple big differences. This is fairly light coverage. This is a very natural finish. Uh, this is kind of weightless feeling. So those are all good qualities. This is dry. The Wet n Wild one is very much the same, but more dewy and has a natural kind of um, skin-like appearance to it. This is just a lot drier. That's really the big differences between the two as far as how the formulas kind of feel. This has the same type of applicator as that Bare Minerals one. This really fails in the color department. And what I mean is to say that this oxidizes would be like the, the, the an understatement of incredible proportion. I put a couple of these shades on my arm and I'm like looking at the shades while I'm, cause I'm trying to pick out my color. So I'm swatching them. In 30 seconds, I look down and they're all orange. I, it's like a pumpkin. This changes color more than any of the concealers that I have here and more than any other skin product that I have ever used. The amount that this changes is fairly drastic. So if you wanna try it, make sure that you swatch it in person and wait a minute and then see what color it is because this is much too light as it is in the tube for my skin. And I, yeah, eh, no, didn't really care for it. I don't like the look of it because it's too dry on my skin, but if you want something that's light coverage, that's natural looking and you have maybe oilier skin, that might be a way to go. If you're familiar with the Wet n Wild one, but you think, no, that's not quite right. It's too dewy, it's too glowy, then go with that one. Let's talk about the e.l.f. 16 hour camo concealer. Now I wanna know who likes this. Raise your hand. Are you raising your hand? Okay, now leave me a comment and tell me why because this is the biggest piece of shit that I've ever used in my life. This is, to quote Julie Louis-Dreyfus, this is like using a croissant for a dildo. And let me be clear, it makes a fucking mess and it doesn't work. This shit sucks. I have never used anything that looked so horrendously awful in a skin product ever. It's got the big stupid wand, so points there. Now let me tell you about my experience buying this first, because this is the darkest shade that Ulta carried. The Ulta that I was at, I am the actual darkest color that they had in the display. I don't know if that's Elf's fault. I don't know if that's Ulta's fault. I'm sure it comes in other colors. I can't be the darkest shade that's available. But I'm thinking when I see it, I see that there's like the colors there. I'm like, this can't be right. So I pick a color that's a couple of shades lighter. I take it home and I try it. And I'm like, wow, this looks like somebody just took chalk dust and put it all over my face. And I look 500 years old. So I go back and I say, this is the wrong color. I try and pick up the darkest one and it's been used. Somebody picked it up, poked around with it, put it back. I don't know what they did with it. So I go to a different Ulta. I actually have to have somebody help me because somebody or other people, whoever, the group of people came in and they were just playing with these and putting them back. So they had all been opened. We finally found one in the darkest shade that was not opened. Went home, tested it out, 
Big surprise, it still looks like chalk all over my face. This gave me wrinkles where I didn't have wrinkles. This was dry. It managed to emphasize dry patches. And then when there weren't dry patches, it was scaly. This was horrible. Now, medium peach. This was the darkest one that they had. And I don't mean they were sold out of the others. I mean, this is as dark as the display went. Whatever. No. So I will say this. I will give I will give it this 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 one this does something that none of these other concealers do. That stuff is so dry and it stays put so well. I had to use soap and water to scrub it off my skin. And if you want a liquid concealer that's going to actually do spot concealing for blemishes, you don't want to use a cream and you want something that lasts forever, that's your one. If you can find something that matches your skin tone, that's the one because none of these stayed like that stuff did. That did not want to go away in a fashion that kind of bothered me. Let's talk about Estee Lauder's Double Wear Stay In Place Concealer. Now, I know this one really well. This used to be a kit concealer for me, so I'm very familiar with it. If you looked at this at the beginning, if you noticed, there were no matte concealers in this list. Reason being, one, I've already done a Guide to MAC Concealers video, so I've already talked about them. If you want to look at it, you can check it out. Reason two, MAC's Pro Longwear Concealer and MAC's, uh, is it the Studio Fix 24-hour concealer that's the, the most recent one that they launched? The ingredient list on both of those is very similar to this. I, I, I found out that they were similar to each other when I was doing research. This is a very standard lip gloss look and wand. This, this is like the tube that all Aveda lip glosses come in. This um, is a really nice concealer. If This is what I want to say. If you want to know anything about it, go and look at my MAC video and look at the review for MAC's Pro Longwear and their uh, Studio Fix 24 hour, whatever it was. It does kind of smell like Studio Fix foundation, actually. This is very nice. No crease, no fine lines, lasts a long time. It's a nice kind of, uh, it's not completely opaque full coverage, but it's, it's a really good product. This one I really, really like. All right, let's talk about Fenty's Pro Filter. Now, this one I'm going to have a fun time talking about just because I'm going to be snarky for one minute because I know that their whole thing is the, the big shades, right? This was so hard to find my shade in. I just want to say that just to be a dick. And that's fine. It's not a bit. There are plenty of foundations. There are plenty of concealers that come in my shade. It's an undertone issue. I'm very cool toned and a lot of these had a lot of yellow in them. As far as the product goes, the wand is the same type of wand that I found in the Bare Minerals one, that sort of flattened lip gloss looking wand. The product itself, Quite nice. Reminds me a lot of Tarte's Shape Tape without the dryness. And we'll talk about Shape Tape in a minute, but it's a very, it's the driest one of the bunch. It's, well, except for that chalk chip from e.l.f. This um, has a lot more of a skin-friendly, kind of emollient, sort of moisturizing kind of a feel. This is much more comfortable to wear than Shape Tape. Just be aware, anything that is kind of emollient and has a nice creamy texture that doesn't dry down, really, really super dry, is gonna crease. It just does. On the, like, the lids, on the bottom lids, if you get it there. Big shock. I mean, something creased in your eyelid. Surprise. I would say if you can find your shade and you're looking for something that's kind of like Shape Tape, something that's pretty full coverage, but just not as uh, dry, that's that's a good one to go for. I picked up the Hello Fab Bendy Avocado Concealer. This was one, this is from First Aid Beauty. This was one that was a Patreon request and I had never even heard of this before. It's a very standard looking package with a very standard looking lip glossy looking wand. It's that same flattened one that we saw in the Bare Minerals one. The actual product was kind of interesting. This um, was like across the board, average, I mean good, but like what you'd expect from a liquid concealer. It's just like, it's like textbook. It does what it's supposed to, it does exactly as it says on the tin. It does, uh, it's, there's no creasing, there's no emphasizing of fine lines, it's not too dry, it's not too emollient, it covers well, it's not completely opaque, but it does cover well. Now, I don't think the shade range is that extensive, but um, I don't know, if you could find your color, it might be worth trying. I, I kind of liked it, I thought it was good. This actually did what I wanted the Giorgio Armani concealer to do, and it didn't. And let's talk about that next, because this was disappointing. This is the Power Fabric. Now, I was really, really excited to try this. I heard about it, and I was waiting for this to come out for weeks, months, years, 
because I'm such a fan of face fabric. I used to use it all the time. The description on this is awesome. It's like, oh, this is like gonna be like, a it's just makes the most disgusting sound when you pull that out. All of the Giorgio Armani, the little stopper thing, is a, it's a little like uh, worn out looking, too much action. In the same way that that avocado one was, this is average in the bad direction. This is like just meh. It just looked okay. It just wasn't great. And I was really disappointed because I wanted to love this. It doesn't have a scent, which I was impressed with because a lot of Armani stuff does. This does not, so that was good. But otherwise, it was just kind of a miss. And of the two, that uh, Bendy Avocado whatever thingy, that, that one is much better. Let's talk about Joan Collins Timeless Beauty Fade to Perfect Concealer. Did I get that right? Yes. This is one of my favorites, and I put this in here because I've talked about it so many times. Now, the shade range in here, is really small. I don't use this as a concealer. I don't think of this as a concealer type product. The applicator here is very similar to like um, the uh, Estee Lauder one, I would say. It's just a nice classic doe foot applicator. I describe this, and I have said this before, as two chaclot in a tube with a wand. This is a brightening product. I use this to like brighten any dark areas, shadows, stuff like that. It's less coverage than the Bare Minerals one, so I would kind of use them the same, but the Bare Minerals one is a lot more coverage. Uh, this is much lighter. I really like this. I, the, I have gone through tubes of this, and I always have one in my bag. There's a couple things that I just obsess over with the Joan Collins Timeless Beauty line, and their foundation and their concealers are right at the top of that list. Let's talk about Juvia's Place. This is the I Am Magic Concealer. Now, this came out right at the tail end of me testing these, so I decided to get it because a lot of people were talking about it at the time. This has another one of those big, big, um, goofy-looking uh, applicators. This has the most interesting texture out of all of the ones that I tested. It has a, um, it's just buttery. It's just a very rich texture. It blends extremely well. It just kind of melts into the skin, which is really nice, and I imagine because of the texture. It doesn't have like super, super, super high coverage. It does crease a little bit because it's so creamy and it's so rich. The color I got was 19 and it's far too light for me, but it's hard to shade match online and I bought this online because I bought it when it just launched. So I would say if you wanted something that was sort of full, medium-ish, full-ish coverage and you didn't mind the applicator and you really wanted a rich and creamy, buttery kind of a texture, this would be one to go for. The next one I'm gonna talk about is from Jeffree Star. This is the Magic Star Concealer. This is another one that was a request. I wasn't going to actually buy this. I thought the packaging was a little goofy. It looked like I'm a, I wanna lick it and have it taste like strawberry. This is another example of me ending up like kind of begrudgingly like, I, I, let's, I have to admit at some point that I'm a fan of the brand because I, I used their liquid lipsticks and I was like, okay, these are actually really good. I wasn't gonna buy the eyeshadows, and then I bought the Blue Blood palette because it's blue eyeshadow, and I'm like, oh, this is the formula? Oh, shit, this is actually good. So then I bought the rest of the eyeshadow palettes, and I wasn't gonna get the concealer, but somebody's like, get the concealer. So I said, okay, I'll get the concealer. This is one of my favorite ones in this whole lineup. Now, the applicator, let's talk about this, is the most unique out of all of them. Now, it's not a unique applicator. I've seen this in, I wanna say a YSL, like glossy vinyl sticky thing from years ago. It's kind of a doe foot with a hole in it. It's a little donut foot. And because of that, it holds a lot of product. So one dip and you've got, you're fine. Now, the product itself is not as full coverage as you would expect from, I, I expected like massive coverage coming out of someone like Jeffree Star, but it had a natural kind of full coverage. It was, it, it has like a medium to full, but it's not as opaque as you might think. The finish is very natural. There is no creasing. There is no emphasizing of fine lines. It's very comfortable to wear. It blends incredibly easy. This reminded me a lot of Max Pro Longwear Concealer, if you're familiar with that one and you like it in a more creamy kind of a base, like just a creamier texture. Really liked this. This is one of my favorites out of the whole bunch. I, I quite liked it. Let's talk about L'Oreal's Infallible, Infallible? Infallible Full Wear Concealer. Now at this point, I'm gonna to refer to my notes because I have a few notes on two of these and I'm gonna talk about them together. I have Maybelline's Fit Me 
and I have L'Oreal's Infallible. And I compared them because I was testing them at the same time and there were some interesting kind of similarities and contrasts. So I found that the L'Oreal Concealer offered a fuller coverage in a heavier, more buttery formula, whereas the Maybelline was a little thinner and had more of a lighter, uh, more natural coverage. The L'Oreal one comes with that big gigantor wand and the Maybelline one, brush or is it just a, no, it's just a small wand. I couldn't remember if any of these had like a little brush applicator. As the drugstore concealers went, the ones that I picked up, I would say that the Maybelline has the most like medium natural coverage look. The L'Oreal has the more full coverage along with Makeup Revolution, which we'll talk about in a minute. The Makeup Revolution I liked more. The Wet n Wild has the most light coverage. I'm trying to look at my notes and in my notes I actually go off on another tangent about the e.l.f. concealer. So I didn't apparently have a whole lot to say about the L'Oreal one other than it had a tendency to crease in fine lines whereas the Makeup Revolution one which let's talk about now did not. Now this is the Makeup Revolution Conceal and Define Concealer again with the big goofy wand but it's a smaller too. I think it's the same weight as a lot of the rest of them. You get the same amount of product. It's just a, a squat little tube. Now this is um, less coverage than Fenty's, so less than Tarte Shape Tape, but only just less. It's still fairly full coverage. No emphasizing fine lines, a nice buildable formula, a really good texture, very little creasing. I really liked this one and at the price point, I would say that this is definitely a product worth checking out if you're looking for a concealer with fairly full coverage. This is a nice one. I actually was quite impressed with that. Next, let's talk about NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer. Now, I, you know if you've watched me, I'm not a huge fan of NARS products, and this is the first NARS product that I've actually ever purchased. I did because it's a big seller and it's classic. Everybody's used it for years. Everybody knows it, and I thought this would be a wonderful kind of control product to like go, is it more so like this? Is it less so like this? Da, da, da. What I found was that the formula to me just seemed so um, kind of old that it wasn't really a good comparison. I couldn't really compare it to the others very well. This has, a, it's on the medium side of full coverage. It had a drier texture than a lot of the other products. It, it dried down and it just felt dry on the skin. The applicator is a classic doe foot, just like the classic classic, just like the Estee Lauder one. Um, as far as, and what, this applied, because of the sort of dry texture, I thought that this applied more like a cream concealer than a liquid concealer. It had a tendency to drag on the skin as I was applying it. And I applied all these with a little mini beauty blender. This also put out probably the least amount of product right up there with Wet n Wild. Wet n Wild has a problem with their doe foot applicators. Their, their liquid lipsticks, their lip glosses, they're all the same. They just don't pick up a lot of product. And this, I had to go back in like two, three times just to do the under eyes. I'd say it's fine in that sort of classic, yes, this is a, it does what it's supposed to do. I liked the Bendy Avocado one more because I thought it was just a little bit nicer. This is a little bit drier. At some point, when you're talking about 20 concealers, is that what I got here? At some point, girl, they're all just liquid concealer. They start, it's really hard to like nitpick and find the differences because at some point they do all start to kind of blend together. And perhaps I'm biased because I'm not a real big fan of the brand, but not great. And it didn't look great on my skin and that's just because it was so dry. Let's talk about Shape Tape, speaking of dry. I wanted to hate this because I'd heard that it was so dry. And I don't, I actually don't. It's worth mentioning though, that out of all of these products, this is the only one with a perfume. And it kind of stinks. It's like, it's like a dryer sheet or something. It has, it's just, it's a very, it smells like cleanser. It smells like, um, it's not the most pleasant smell to me. Because this dried so fast and so well, it didn't uh, crease. But because it was so dry, it also kind of emphasized dry skin and fine lines. So it kind of looked a little old. From a distance when I put this on, I can see why perhaps maybe someone who was younger who wanted more full coverage would gravitate towards this and quite like it. It's just very, 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 very dry. Now let's talk about Too Faced Born This Way Super Coverage Multi-Use Sculpting Concealer. That is the stupid longest stupidest name ever. This is a fairly new one. It's also, as you couldn't tell, it's going to be a gigantic wand. This, um, <sighs> T 
this is, this is, um, how do you say, this is catering to the group of people who want to use concealer to highlight and contour and not just conceal. So this is sort of being marketed as that type of a product in my opinion. It's got a texture that's, I would say, similar to Shape Tape, but it's not nearly as dry. It's not as buttery and emollient as Juvie's Place, but it's kind of got similar coverage. If you kind of combined the two, you might end up with this. It's okay. It's, I don't know. For the money, if you're just looking for something full coverage, I swear that Makeup Revolution one, I think it does the job for a big, stupid applicator freaking concealer thing, I think it's better. Eh. Let's talk about Urban Decay Naked Skin. Now again, I'm gonna say one more time, at some point these all start to look really similar. This has a wand applicator that's just like the Bare Minerals one, that kind of flattened lip glossy thing. There's nothing that I can really say that's bad about this. There's nothing that I can really say that's good about this other than it's decent. This offered medium coverage in a formula that didn't emphasize dry skin or fine lines. It didn't crease too bad, a little bit around the lids, just like you would expect a product to. It was just average. I just think it's just kind of a normal, like, liquidy cream concealer. There's nothing really super exciting about it. It just doesn't blow me away. And I will tell you which ones did as soon as we start talking about this one. This is the last one of the bunch. This is Wet n Wild's Photo Focus Concealer Corrector. This has a uh, applicator that's just like a standard good old-fashioned lip gloss. This offered, I would say, medium, also kind of sheerish coverage. It's one of the lighter coverage ones. It's very similar, as I was saying, to the ColourPop one. The exception is that it doesn't oxidize, it doesn't change colors nearly as much, not on me, not at all, and it um, uh, doesn't have that dryness to it. It's got a very natural look, very, very, like, I put this on and I couldn't tell that I was wearing anything. It just sort of made things go away that I wanted to have go away. Not completely, just a little bit. This surprised me in that it didn't seem to crease either. That shocked me. I expected this to crease, especially in any kind of like lines around the eyes. No, not at all. It's funny because when I did the stick foundation uh, review, roundup, head to head, Thunderdome, whatever the hell that thing was, the Wet n Wild foundation is one that kind of came out on top. And again, the concealer is pretty good. If you have dry skin, if you have mature skin, if you're looking for something that's sort of light medium coverage, you don't want to spend a lot of money, this is a place to go. It's certainly, you, you can't, I mean, it's not expensive, so it's worth a shot. Now, as far as my favorites go, the Jeffree Star one, by far, I would say, was the biggest surprise and the biggest like, oh, I actually really like this. This offered not completely full coverage, but a really nice finish that I could see working on a multitude of different skin types. This is like oily skin friendly, dry skin friendly, in my in my opinion, I think that it would be. Um, the Juvia's Place had that kind of emollient texture that was really nice if you want something that's super buttery, but if you have more mature skin, it's gonna crease more. Uh, the, the Bendy Avocado thing, this was another surprise. This is one that I really, really liked. And again, I would say on a multitude of skin types, dry, oily, whatever, it's a nice kind of does exactly what you want it to do sort of concealer, which I was really pleased with. The Makeup Revolution one for a drugstore option was wonderful if you want full coverage. Absolutely great. It, it's it's one of the more full coverage products that are on the table here, and it's cheap. It's cheap as hell, so why not, right? I mean, hello. And then if you want that like lighter coverage, the Wet n Wild one, again, it's that same kind of like, the same reason that I like this so much, it's kind of does the job, but, but ignore me when I say that because I want you to get this because if you don't buy it, then maybe one day they'll stop making it. Um, this is really nice though. They're, they're kind of, I would say they're probably kind of similar. That's a nice like little highlighty product. Uh, the Wet n Wild one definitely is a little more of a concealer than this is. This is more of a very much in that sort of uh, two chaclot kind of family. And that's, that's, that's what we have. That's, that's it. There we go. So thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think of this. If you've tried any of these, please uh, give your opinions. And if you do, 
tell people what skin type you are and what you like or don't like about a product because people can look at the comments in this video and then get some information from it. That's wonderful. Um, yeah, any questions, let me know. Uh, otherwise, I will see you later. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. I want to stop talking now. <laughs> I'll see you guys soon. Thank you. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.